everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back. So today's video is all about the environment and animal agriculture in relation to the environment and all the negative effects it has on it. I will link all the sources I use down below so you guys can fact check me. And I really hope you learned something. I hope this encourages you to maybe eat a little more plant-based if you're not already. So starting off with just a quick fact about animal agriculture and the environment is that animal agriculture is the second largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions and 25% of man-made global warming is from methane emissions. So just a quick explanation about what methane is and then I'll get into what it does to the environment. Methane is a gas that is produced from cows basically farting and burping to get more sciency. It's in the digestion process. Microbes in the stomach contain methane and are released in gas form. So, obviously, with less cows, there's less methane, and with more cows, more methane. Um, so a lot of people, when talking about the environment, want to talk about CO2 and how bad that is for the atmosphere, which that is true, CO2 sucks, but methane is actually more destructive than CO2 because first it warms up the planet for decades and then it ends up turning into CO2, so it has the effects of CO2 plus extra negative effects before it turns into that. It also warms the planet 86 times as much as CO2 gas does. To kind of compare the numbers of both together and to show you how much more destructive um, methane is than CO2, I found that cows release 70 to about 120 kilograms of methane per year. And since methane has a higher negative effect than CO2, 100 kilograms of methane, so about what a cow produces in a year, is equivalent to around 2,300 kilograms of CO2. Another thing people think is that transportation is the biggest cause to CO2 emissions and that's what we need to focus on, not necessarily animal agriculture. That's not the case. So I wrote down some numbers here. I read about comparing emissions from a car versus like a cow. So comparing it to a car, a cow releasing CO2 per year is the same amount of CO2 made by burning a thousand liters of gas. With a car using 8 liters per 100 kilometers, you could drive 12,500 kilometers per year or 7,800 miles, which is a lot. And that's just one cow doing that. And to put it into even more perspective, one kilogram of beef is equivalent to 34.6 kilograms of CO2. A kilogram of pork is equivalent to 6.35 kilograms of CO2, and a kilogram of chicken is equivalent to 4.57 kilograms of CO2. It's mostly cows that are releasing CO2, and that's what we need to focus on when thinking about the environment and methane and CO2 emissions, but all animals release this and the more animals there are, the more emissions there's gonna be. So we need to cut down on animal agriculture and the amount of animals in existence to lower our methane and CO2 emissions. And the way you can do that as an individual is by becoming vegan and or eating more plant-based than you are right now. Even little changes here and there really make a big difference. So now let's talk about deforestation. So just a quick fact, 30% of Earth's land surface is used for animal agriculture. That's already a huge amount. 30% of all land is used for animals to be eaten. And to create more pastures, 70% of the forests in the Amazon have been destroyed for land. So I'm gonna give you a quick little list of the effects of deforestation and why it's even bad. There are loss of habitats and species, increased greenhouse gases, because fewer trees allow for more gases in the atmosphere. And then I thought this was really interesting, that tropical rainforests in South America contribute to 20% of Earth's oxygen. And those are disappearing by around 10 acres per decade. And then this also allows for more water in the atmosphere, so there is less water to nourish so to nur nourish. Ugh, that was gross. Who says that? This also means that there is more water in the atmosphere, so less water to nourish land and soil. So if we continue at a fast rate like we are of destroying forests, 
we will no longer be able to grow crops one day. And then talking about it from a social perspective, animal agriculture corporations want to destroy land. They have to evict indigenous tribes, which is just awful. Like people are living there. They don't know where else to go and you're just kicking them out of their literal land, like forest area. Like I just don't, that's not right. You know, it's just not. And then I thought this fact, like I had to check it to make sure it was real because I, I could not believe this. One to two acres of rainforest are cleared every second. Not every day, not every month, every second. What the heck? Like one to two acres, that's a lot of freaking rainforest. And that's cleared every second. I didn't even know we had that much rainforest in the world. Like that's insane. Um, now the last big subject I'm going to talk about is water and how much water is used for animal agriculture. About 2,500 gallons of water are used per one pound of beef. And that's the, like an average conservative number. So it most likely is even more than that for every pound of beef, but that's the low average number. 2,500 gallons. Can you even picture that in your mind? And that's for one pound of beef. So a quarter of that is for your one little burger you eat from In-N-Out. That's around like 600, 700 gallons of water for that one burger. That's just, that shouldn't be happening. And then I'm gonna give you the amounts of water used for one pound of other animal products. So one pound of cheese uses 900 gallons of water. One pound of eggs uses 477 gallons of water. And one gallon of milk uses 1,000 gallons of water. So again, the highest water usage comes from beef, but even eating eggs uses 477 gallons of water per one pound of egg. Like I said before, literally doing the smallest bit of cutting down helps so much. You are used to eating a burger every day and you cut four burgers out a week, you'd be saving 2,500 gallons of water. That's a lot and a lot more than you'd be saving by just taking shorter showers and turning off the water when you're brushing your teeth and that kind of stuff that we all say to do which is great to do you should be doing that also but that's not gonna make as big a difference as just changing your diet up a little bit which is not that hard and you can get used to and you can find foods that you like and it's really really simple and you can make a huge difference by cutting back once or twice a week and that's that shouldn't be that much of a sacrifice for anyone. Okay, now I'm basically done talking about the big subjects, but I'm just gonna list some quick little facts I thought were interesting. And these are all from Cowspiracy, which is a documentary. One of the documentaries that finally encouraged me to become fully vegan. So I recommend watching it. I believe it's on Netflix. So first little fact, cows produce 150 billion gallons of methane per day. So all cows produce that much. 150 billion gallons. What the heck? We will exceed our CO2 limit by 2030 just from raising animals without including fossil fuels. Two to five acres of land are used per cow. A farm with 2,500 dairy cows produce the same amount of waste as a town with 411,000 people. I'm just gonna let that sink in. We're just gonna have a moment of silence here. Think about that. Wow. 90 to 100 million tons of fish are pulled from oceans each year. And then I think this fact is just really sad and a lot of people don't realize this is happening at such a large scale. One pound of fish caught in obviously fishing industries means that around five pounds of unintended fish are caught, which means that they just throw away the fish that they don't want. That's too much, way too much. These facts irritate me if you can't tell. Um, they, they make me sad, you know? It's, the world shouldn't be like this, and even if somebody doesn't really care about how animals are treated, um, and doesn't really care about what they eat in terms of their health and that kind of stuff, you should care about the world that you live in and the world your children are gonna live in and your grandchildren and just how so soon we could see a lot of things going very downhill and it's in our lifetime 
um, maybe a hundred years ago this wasn't as much of a concern because we thought, oh we'll fix everything by the time we get to the point of actually destroying our oceans and our forests and things like that and using that much water. But now it's literally gonna happen and we need to really think about that and start making individual efforts because it's hard to change big corporations' minds. It really is. We're not, they only care about money and we're not gonna get anywhere by just telling them to change when they're the ones in the power, they're the ones with all the money and doing whatever they wanna do. It starts with individuals making personal changes and then we change what the demand is for. You know, if we don't demand as much animal products, then less forests are going to be destroyed, less water is going to be used, less fish are going to die, less methane and CO2 emissions are going to be released into our atmosphere. Therefore, the earth is going to last longer and our environment is going to be healthier for longer. And we need to really start making that change. Again, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, I know I learned a lot just from researching it and Hopefully you can make small differences in your everyday life and every week make little changes um, to really just trying to help the world that we live in. And there's things for everyone to do no matter what type of household you live in, no matter where you live. There's little changes you can make. You just gotta really put your foot down and say, I'm gonna try as best as I can to help the world and to help you know my health and animals and all that too but if you're really focusing on the environment and this stuff was crazy to you you can do something no matter who you are you can make small changes trust me you just gotta really set your mind to it so um if you like this video again please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed and i will see you guys next time